quote from scripture that was read, peace be to this house. I first want to say what a grand honor it is to be back here at St. George's and seeing so many cheery faces that I know and to know what a wonderful preacher you had this morning and some of you came back this afternoon. You're very brave, I've got to tell you, but I am delighted to see you and I'm delighted to see many of you wearing your Order of Niagara. So a tip uh, from the mitre from an old bishop to each and every one of you. I want to say a couple of words about uh, those who are assembled. I had the privilege of ordaining your rector and then officiating at Martha and Dan's wedding. That just seemed only yesterday, can I say, but it was a grand event and a happy memory, so I want to particularly say to Martha how blessed this congregation is in having you as their rector. You've done a wonderful thing in this place and we rejoice in your ministry. Let me tell you how lucky we are to have Dan at the cathedral. Um, it's a world of good for him to work under a Wycliffe bishop. <laughs> it's done marvels for him. Next thing you might see him in his academic hood, who knows. But uh, we want to say that Dan is a great benefit to uh, the cathedral's life and we rejoice in having him. So having Martha and Dan in this diocese, it's truly a blessed place. I can't come to St. George's and not think about Walter and Mavis. And those were two people who left an indelible imprint on me and on this diocese, and I give thanks to God for their ministry. And uh, if they had any sense, and I'm glad they did, they're staying home, having a gin and tonic this afternoon, having had their son this morning here with them. So I rejoice. Uh, in their ministry and tell them that I did note that they weren't here, but I know they've sent in their collection ahead of time. <laughs> I look down and here I see uh, Canon Mudlock. Uh, Mudlock here with us today. What a delight it is to see him and I rejoice in the fact that St. Grace Congregation is now here at St. George's and we celebrate his ministry and his place. Mm -hmm. Scott, you've got quite the crowd to work with. And I want to say, uh, I'm sure you're doing a great job here. And I look down and I know Doreen is here and I thank you for her ministry. And I want to say a particular word of someone who knows me far too well for me to say anything. And that's Archdeacon Marion Vincent. She <laughs> flew in from England, I hear, uh, yesterday. And she's even here today. So I want to say, Marion, um, the relationship and the privilege I had at working with you in those uh, long years at the Synod office have meant so much to me. So I rejoice, and Paul, to see you at church, what a mark on, on everyone's. I will just want to draw attention to that for everyone um, and to rejoice on that happy event. Mary Hesketh here, and Mary, I just want to say I have happy, happy memories of your husband and you in the life of this diocese and rejoice and give thanks for it. So I think I've managed to say, except one word to John Butler. What great to hear you on the great Wurlitzer again. And, um, and may I say, what a treat. It's worth the drive to come down and hear this choir sing. Uh, facing the Queenie or anything else, thank you choir for your wonderful music today. And I rejoice in that. So it's 225 years here. I assume I've been asked because I'm one of the oldest bishops around that you could dig up. Um, and I'm not quite that old. I just want to say that to you. It's quite a year for us. Canada, 150 years. This parish, 225th. And you've done so much in the life of, of this diocese and in this community. I'd like just to say a word, if I might, that sometimes when a nation or a church or an individual um, are here um, and we're happy about a big event and we want to swell our chest and say to everybody, look at us, look what we've done, it's sometimes good for a moment to wheel ourselves in and be humble. Uh, may I tell you a story about myself being humbled? 
Some of you will know that my wife Carol taught at St. Mildred's, an Anglican uh, school in Oakville, and um, she taught kindergarten in grade one. And when I was elected bishop, Carol said, now, the girls all want you to come to school all dressed up as a bishop. I said, no, they don't. You want me to come. And she said, no, Ralph, we've been talking about bishops, and I want you there. It's very important. It was hard to say no to Carol because she had done so much for me over the years. So I better <clears throat> swallow and say, yes, I'd be delighted to come, dear. Yes. So off I got dressed up and toddled off to St. Mildred's. And there were 60 kindergarten and grade one little girls all in their uniforms, all who were giggling at yours truly as I walked into the place. And um, <clears throat> I uh, said uh, how pleased I was to be there and were there any questions they'd like to ask me. Well, of course, the first hand up was, and I said, yes, yes, why do you dress so funny? <laughs> was helpful um, as the start off and I soon started to take things off and hand it to them my hat and my ring and my cross so they could all play bishop and one little girl pointed to my collar and said do you have a boo-boo mm -hmm. and uh, I said boo -boo. And I, oh she thinks it's a bandage so I pulled it out and I said no no this is a clergy collar and I passed it about and I could see the little girls turning it over and some of those who were bright were starting to read and they were trying to read the back and I wanted to say that's really nothing it's just the name of the holy hardware store that I bought it at <laughs> but one little girl put up her hand and said I know what it says I know what it says we have one of those at home I thought all oh, you can tell a clergy kid a mile away can't you and I said yes yeah. she said I know what it says it says kills fleas and ticks for six months. <laughs> well, it does humble the new bishop, let I just say that, that you might have thought yourself maybe far more important than you uh, might be, and leave it to a five-year-old to put you in your place. Sometimes it doesn't hurt us in the church to be put in our place on a regular basis that sometimes when we think far too much of ourselves or what we're doing or how we're doing it, it's good for us to stop and take a look at exactly what we're doing. The story of the second lesson that was read to us today has a powerful statement to us. It makes us stop and ask, what are we doing as a church? There's that story of Jesus sending out the disciples two by two. Now, he did that for a number of reasons. And I don't know if you remember when you heard that scripture. Here's your homework for tonight, but you're going to read that again before you go to bed tonight. And see that it talked about 70, 70 people being sent out. Now, 72 in scripture was considered a representation of all the then known nations of the world. People in those days thought there were 72 nations. That was because they, everybody traced their lineage back to Noah and Noah's three sons, Sham and Ham and Japheth. And everybody was a descendant from them. So when Jesus is saying he sent 70 out, he was making reference that he was sending out his followers to the whole world. And we who find ourselves in the church in this day are reminded that our message is for all people. It's a message of peace. It's a message of respect. It's a message of inclusion. It's a message in which we look to others and say, what we're trying to do is to help you and help us be a better person. Do you remember, do you remember some of you might have seen 
the uh, wonderful Broadway musical, The Book of Mormon. Now, I, I'm not usually quoting from the Book of Mormon, in case some of you are worried about that. But there was a wonderful scene in that. Do you remember when the two young men came to a house, and they were knocking on the door, and it was teeming of rain. And they were really desperate to get inside. They were soaked wet. And the host, the owner of the house, said, oh, come on in. Come on in and sit down. So sure enough, they came in and they sat down. And as they sat down, the host said, well, what do we do now? And one of the young men said, I don't know, we've never got this far before. <laughs> <coughs> well, there is for us an opportunity for us to go out and not only to knock on doors, but to meet people wherever we find people that we can share our lives with. And in sharing our lives, we share our faith. We share who we are in our faith in Jesus Christ and that wonderful gospel that renews and transforms and changes us and an opportunity we have of sharing that good news. It's hard at times to come to grips with the fact that when we're in a parish, we don't always realize that we're part of something much bigger. My son Christopher, because my kids never know what to give me, bought me the CD set of a series called The Band of Brothers. It was a story of a group of men in the American army going through the Second World War, in particular from their arrival in England to going through D-Day and finally the conquering of of Germany. And one of, the, one of the men that was interviewed, who was actually a soldier from that period of time, was asked, what was it like? And he said it was horrible. I can't tell you the terror and the horror and the blood that I saw. And the commentator said, how did it affect you? And he said, well, it's strange for me to say this. I look back at it at some of the most important times of my life. And I do that, he said, because for the first time in my life, I felt I was part of something that was much bigger. The liberation of Europe, the conquering of evil, and even though I was a nobody and a mere private in the American army, I was there to do my part. You see, that's very much exactly what that lesson that was read to us is all about. It's a challenge to you and me that we might do our part, that we might be people who see ourselves part of the greater picture. The good news of Jesus Christ being spread around the world, being shared, and that making sure that this place which we love, love its walls and its windows and its organ, and most of all, we love its people. But we're part of something that's larger than St. George's. We're part of God's people here on earth. And that is part of God's people we have a particular job to do. And that is to reinforce in each other that we're here to do what we can for each other and bring the best out of each other when we declare and live our faith. That's really why we're here today to celebrate 225 years. The wood's great. The stones are wonderful, the bells are fabulous, the organ is just wow. But we're the important people that are here. Because we've been challenged to do the word of Jesus Christ, to be the church. And in an era when we see that greed is all powerful, and that greed for a lot of people is the pathway to success, we're the people who blow the whistle. We're the Christians to say, there's another way. There's another way in which we, 
we talk about that we want people not to be selfish, but to be giving. We want people not to be taking, but sharing. We want people not to have greed, but to show compassion. And above all, we want people to say that we don't want to be served, but that we want to be serving. I know that that is part of the ministry of this place. For 225 years, the faithful people of this parish church have done just that. But the challenge is always there for all of us. The job isn't done. There's more work to be done and more opportunities. And even though we might say when we hear the rector say, I need volunteers for, and many of you dive under the pews, I'm saying to you, here's a chance for us to be the people of God, to say what Jesus Christ means in our life and how we live it out, and above all, what this place can be, a light and a beacon to the people of St. Catherine. On this year, 225th anniversary, may I give thanks to God for those clergy who are here and serve you. May I give thanks to God for you, the people of this parish, and all that you've done for this community, for this place, for our Diocese of Niagara, and for the message of the church. And may I give thanks for each and every one of you that you and I are on this journey together, hand in hand, as it were, to be the church, to be the people of God, and to do God's will. I give thanks for each and every one of you and for this place. Thanks be to God. Amen.